Ressa joins us now by Skype from Manila. And Maria, thank you for joining us. In response to your arrest, you have said, now is the time to hold the line. And you use that as a hashtag, hold the line. What do you mean by that? Uh, we need to make sure that both our government and Filipinos know that we won't uh, accept the kind of pushing back of the sh tiny little shifts in the way the law is being executed and the way the Constitution is being changed to stop these little deaths by a thousand cuts, these nicks that are draining the body of our democracy dry. You, you say that there's so much more at stake here. It, it's, it's not just about you, not just about Rappler, but democracy. President Rodrigo Duterte has denied political motivations here. Do you believe Duterte is out to silence you, despite the fact that I mean, you're a time person of the year? The whole world is watching. You know, I try not to take anything personally, nor to give any kinds of, I am, I'm trying not to take it personally, but here's the reality. In yeah. less than two months, I've posted bail six times on charges that are frankly ridiculous. In this one, you pointed out cyber libel. This is uh, a story that Rappler published the first year it was born seven years ago. And it uh, was actually published before this law, the cyber libel law was even enacted. You can't constitutionally, you can't have a law uh, go retroactively. And then, um, Aside from that, the way the arrest was carried out, the arrest warrant coming in, the NBI officers coming in at 5 p.m. after courts closed, there was one court, the night court that was open until 9 p.m., the judge refusing to grant bail, to allow me to post bail, even though our lawyers were there two hours beforehand. Lots of irregularities, and the only thing I can think of is, you know, the government wants me to feel its power. I spent the night yeah. in detention, and all I know is that I feel like my rights have been violated, my rights as a Filipino citizen. So I'm demanding accountability for that and will do so in the proper venues. Uh, I am also, as a journalist, I know firsthand how the law is being weaponized against perceived critics. I'm not a critic. I'm a journalist. I'm doing my job holding the government to account. You're saying that the law in the Philippines is being weaponized and weaponized against you, a high-profile critic of Rodrigo Duterte. What is the wider impact of your arrest? Is this going to have an impact on press freedom in general in the Philippines and across the region? I think it already has. And, you know, one of our young reporters yesterday who was doing a live stream on Facebook when the officers were here to serve the arrest warrant, um, he, one of the officers actively tried to stop her from, from, do, from covering. And of course she knew her rights. She knew she could continue live streaming. And then he t turned to her and said, uh, be silent or you're next. And I think that that's a very clear message here. And it is the use of fear in this way. I'm being set up as an example so that others will stop asking tough questions. And I think that puts responsibility on me to continue asking tough questions, uh, to not allow a, a, it, this doesn't make me afraid. Frankly, it's an extremely petty move to keep me in detention overnight. I have the right to bail and, uh, and that should have been granted to me. Um, We'll continue. The mission becomes even more critical. Uh, hashtag hold the line, Christy. Maria Ressa, CEO of Rappler, thank you so much for joining us to talk about your arrest and the wider implications for press freedom. Maria, take care.